Today we are checking out something I think is extremely cool, which is the Santa Cruz Hightower 3. This is a third iteration of what they call their most capable bike. This is something where you're looking to do absolutely everything with, but not going to the cross country races or downhill races, but you still wanna be able to ride all those courses and everything in between. Even better, even better engineering, a lot of tweaks, big changes, and honestly, one of the cleanest looking bikes I've seen recently. It looks really nice, and let's get into it, shall we? So with this model of bike there on a full 29 inch rim, it is an excellent option for that all purpose riding. Obviously 29 is proven to be and is going to be the biggest and fastest wheel size out there for now, and I think for the next long time. It rolls fast, it's got a good geometry to it, so it rolls over things really well, but it's not too slack that it slugs on the trails and on the climbs, it still goes very, very efficiently. With that VPP suspension in the rear, you're able to really attack her sharp objects really well, have good efficiency, and then it gives a nice soft plush feel to it without being too inefficient on those climbs, but adds a lot of comfort that way. You've got 150 mils at the front and 145 at the back. Seems like a weird combination in some ways. Maybe 145 is that ultimate amount of squish. You're getting a super comfortable position, but it's not that 130 lightweight setup. It's not that 150, 160 setup. 145 and 150? Is this the perfect combination of suspension travel? Honestly, I'm liking it. This one here is obviously in carbon. Right now, that's all Santa Cruz has for any models. Whether they'll come out in future years back with aluminum models is to be seen yet. It would be nice to get one of these at a slightly lower price point, but you can't knock that carbon. They are very well made, and everything to do with Santa Cruz is put together really well. Even down to the wheels, they are laced in-house, so it's the little details of tuning and fine-tuning that makes something like this a really premium bike. Carbon fiber frame, redesigned geometry this year, so it is a little slacker, but steeper, like the classic moves that everyone's doing. Everyone's trying to one-up each other and get the perfect design. And just cruising this round in simple terms without taking to a too detailed ride through the trails, it does feel very capable. It does feel like they've really nailed it on the head with that design and geometry. You do have the storage box on the inside, which is nearly impossible to open. They have got magnets on there, which are very strong, which I like a lot. It works well. You do have a storage pouch on the inside, so you can store a spare tube or other flat repair kit like a, a plug or something like that. Obviously with this level of bike, it is coming tubeless straight from the box. You'll be able to run whatever PSI you want with no issues, but let's pull this out. You have a lower bag and an upper bag. So they actually take a lot of use out of it. So the upper bag is actually a zippable one. So you'll be able to store more fragile things in there maybe like a tube or tools, whereas something like the wrap, something like the wrap, they actually recommend you store things like your wallet. You can put keys in here, credit card ID, or a little pump to protect it. It's got a good Velcro strap to it. It works well. A little tab to help pull it out. And there's plenty of room in here. This doorway is pretty big. We've seen a few bikes out there, the top fuel aluminum model, that door is pretty tight. Um, so it's nice to see that they've actually put a good sized door on it and the magnet is a nice, nice touch. It just feels secure. It feels like if you accidentally left it open, you're not gonna ride down the trail and it's gonna throw off. You really do need to grip underneath it. With a bottle cage mounted on it, it's gonna definitely be a lot easier because you have a bit more of a handle on there, but it works well. And again, the tab to help pull it out. They really want you to utilize this whole storage instead of some places where they're just really limiting what you can use. There is a lot of storage here. You can you can kind of feel the cables on the interior, so that's kind of good. It's all the cable guideways, so there's not like free cables running in there. Doesn't stop things from falling down, but at least it protects the interior cables. They're gonna just run through a tubing on the inside essentially, which is gonna protect them. This goes on, and then it just has a little latch which latches on. Um, and pinches it into it. So it works well. Nice little clasp to it. 
Drop the post wise, back to the STG. Santa Cruz really likes this one. It's got good performance kicking up. It doesn't have too much play here. We've seen good longevity out of these posts where there's very little maintenance to them. Not many people are sending them back for rebuilds or, or tune-ups. You know, you look at the Fox transfer and it's nearly a yearly thing where you have to ship that away and get it rebuilt. And, and that adds up to overall costs of uh, maintenance and just having this as a product. Something like this, it's very worry-free. Obviously, eventually you might need to rebuild, but we've had lots of good performance and lifespan out of this. This is currently the lowest spec bike, but with that, you still get a Lyric front fork, you still get four piston brakes, and you still get a 12-speed drivetrain. All of them of really good quality too. You get the G2 brakes, which I thought had disappeared for a while there, but they seem to be back. Maybe it's just supply chain issues. It's the G2R series. The G2 series is essentially the entry level to the guides. Um, they work well. They have good feel to them. You just lose a little bit of the grip zones on the levers itself. Little tweaky things which you don't really notice. But overall, it's good two finger feel. It's got the adjustment knob to it so you can quickly adjust the reach if you want without affecting the bleed of it. And they're gonna stop and perform really, really well. Shifting on it is the NX, which is a good shifting set. It does come with the NX matching group set up top as well. So the shifter is NX, and they say one of the best upgrades you can make is to switching this to a GX to just get that snappiness feel to it. The NX performs well, but it definitely has a little bit of a slower response time to it. I mean, if you've not used anything higher end than this, you'll never notice it. But on something like this, you may notice it just shifts and then shifts. Small delay, hardly worth noting, but compared to GX or higher, where it, it shifts while you shift, it, it makes a big difference. As I said, it's got that Lyric front fork on it. Lyric has been around for a long time. They've only made it better and better. Full adjustable compression, which locks in. You can feel the little notches in the multiple positions. So you kind of have a, a trail mode, a soft mode, and a rigid mode all quickly and easily changeable. You can feel the notches when you hit them and it works really well, obviously air. So you'll be able to pump this up exactly per specs to what you need and how it will perform that way. Interestingly enough, they paired this with the Fox Float Rear Shock, which is a good performance one. It's nothing fancy, but it's not like it's a basic one. It's still very high end. You know, for this level of bike, it's excellent. You don't get those secondary chambers, would be kind of interesting to see with it being a 145 mil travel 150 on the front going to a bit bigger or beefier of a rear shock may have been a little nicer but i guess it depends where you're riding for what this is made for excellent choice for a lot of people who might be taking it down bigger hills bigger jumps you might appreciate upgrading just that shock to something with a secondary chamber just to take a little bit more beefiness. Rim wise, they have chose the classic race face AR30. This is a very common one from Santa Cruz. They love this set of rims. It works well with the classic minion setup. You can't go wrong with them. Seemingly every bike is coming out with a minion or minion similar tire. They're beefy, they're aggressive. There's definitely faster rolling tires out there, but this is the style everyone wants right now. You want traction and you want to be confident on it. This is the way to go. So it's got Santa Cruz's little touches as well. The chain guard is extremely durable over the top, but it makes for a very quiet ride and it's going to protect your paint. Not that you'll ever see it because it's got a chain guard over it, but it's going to protect it. It's going to work well and you're not going to need to replace it anytime soon. High quality parts built throughout it, even headsets King Creek. You've got descendant matching cranks so you're not cheaping out on any of the parts on this bike. These are all high-end name brand quality stuff. So if you're looking at this bike, I think you really need to consider what are you doing. And if you start listing off more than two or three things where it's like, I'm racing cross country, maybe this isn't for you. Straight downhill, maybe this isn't for you. But if you start listing off multiple things, you know, I'm gonna do a bit of downhill, I'm gonna do maybe some races, or I'm gonna do some gravel rides, or I'm gonna do some trails. I just wanna be able to ride this bike everywhere. This is the style of bike for you. This is the next level from where those Fuel EX is or something slower like the 5010 where you're just like, I'm a little more playful, I don't really care. This is gonna be a fast machine for anyone and pretty much everyone without potentially winning anything except for best trail bike of the year. Best bike of the year, quite possibly. 
you can really do a lot with this style of geometry, this style of frame. The per spec, which is with the R kit or higher, just gets better and better. Pricing is getting a little higher. With this one, you're at 7250 Canadian for an R kit, which is well worth it, honestly. Like you are getting some really good parts here. The brakes, the front suspension, wheels are excellent. The frame is top notch, along with all the Santa Cruz's little finishings, including bearings, belt and brackets, built up wheels. Real only downside I'd say, and I mean this is really nitpicking, is just that Fox shock. It's it's high end. It, I think it could be bigger, beefier, or just ready to take on more. I think you'd be a teeny bit limited with this. That being said, the VPP suspensions are so efficient and so smooth. Maybe that's all you need. Maybe you don't need to compensate as much for a better shock because now you've built this really complex, really efficient suspension system. That I need to get tested, that I need to figure out for real. If you're looking for a bike which will do it all and you're looking to spend a little bit of extra money and you're looking for that performance, the new Hightower is definitely the bike you should look into and definitely the bike you should be riding. You're not gonna be disappointed with it no matter where you live or what you do unless it's a very specific thing you do like XC racing or downhilling. There's definitely better bikes if you live at the bottom of Whistle Bike Park and you're gonna chairlift up. And there's definitely a better bike if you're trying to be an XC world champion. But to do both of those, that, that might be this one. That really might be it. All right guys, let me know in the comments below if you think I'm right about this bike being the new one bike to do it all with a lot of performance or if there's something else I should check out online. Like it below, subscribe, and thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.